grateful that you are uh, with us here tonight. My name is Mike McGuire, and I'm honored to be able to work with you as state senator, representing, of course, the beautiful county of Mendocino and all throughout the North Coast, from the Oregon border down to the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, we have a, a critical event that we planned tonight. Uh, and we're grateful to have uh, two supervisors and uh, the hardest working sheriff in the state of California with us tonight, Sheriff Matt Kendall. Uh, and thank you to each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be able to join us. We're going to have a really special focus tonight on the latest issues facing the unique communities that make up Northern Mendocino County, along with the North Coast. And of course, we'll be providing a state update here in just a few moment, moments. I uh, want to have a few opening words, and I think that you will all agree with me. Um, times are incredibly tough. Uh, they're incredibly tough across the world and right here in our own backyard. And I would be remiss if I did not say that our thoughts tonight are with the incredibly brave and the strong people of Ukraine. Uh, I'm a firm believer, and I know that each and every one of you are as well, is that we need to stand strong for the people of Ukraine. The United States needs to be firmly behind them. And the picture couldn't be more clear about what we're up against. Ukraine is a true democracy and Russia is far from it. Russia is an autocracy uh, led by a thug, Vladimir Putin. And I'm a firm believer the US, our allies, and yes, even the state of California must make the economic consequences swift, deep and generational for Russia. And I'm gonna be talking about here tonight in just a few moments about what the state of California will be doing uh, to be able to put pressure onto Russia to be able to end this atrocious war that they have waged against the people of Ukraine who are innocent. Now, I will say, at times have been tough right here in our own backyard. Our nation is just starting to come out of the tough times with this pandemic and right here at home as well. We continue in Mendocino County and throughout the North Coast to struggle with uh, historic 1200 year drought and wildfires continue to threaten our communities in our way of life. And we have been through some dark days, but I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that our best days are still ahead, especially in challenging times. There is nowhere else in the world that I'd rather call home than Mendocino County and the North Coast. It's because we never give up. We never give in. And we always stand strong for our neighbors in need through droughts and wildfires and earthquakes, whatever the world throws at us, we're always rallying for our neighbors in need. And tonight we're coming together with three incredible leaders to provide critical updates from the county of Mendocino. You're gonna be hearing from two incredibly hardworking supervisors, that's Supervisor Haschak and Supervisor Jurdy, and we're really grateful that Sheriff Matt Kendall will be providing an operational report on behalf of the Mendocino County Sheriff's Office tonight. Now we're gonna hear from them, then I'm gonna provide a state update, but the most important part of tonight, the most important part of tonight is hearing from each and every one of you. We want this to be an interactive conversation. So there are two ways that you can participate tonight. First and foremost, we're taking your questions live. Simply email us right now senator.mcguire at senate.ca.gov. We're taking your questions, your criticisms, your concerns tonight live, senator.mcguire at senate.ca.gov. We are standing by, ready to take those questions. And of course, if you're watching us via Zoom, simply drop a question into the chat. I've just been told we have about 120 folks who have tuned in tonight. We welcome you uh, coming to us from all throughout Northern Mendocino County. Now, we also have questions that have been submitted, uh, a few dozen, I might add. So we're going to be getting to those here in just a bit. So let's get right into it. Uh, first up tonight, we are really grateful that John Haschek is with us. Uh, Supervisor Haschek, good evening to you, sir. Thank you so much for your dedication to the county and the North Coast. Uh, you have five minutes. The floor is yours. We welcome you and thank you for your partnership. Well, thank you, Super. I mean, Senator McGuire, and thank you to all the people who are attending tonight. Um, I go back a ways with Senator McGuire before he was a senator. I'm a very good friend of his eighth grade math teacher, so he's probably sweating right now if I'm telling a story about no that. stories, but, please, but, Supervisor, dear Lord. She did tell me that um, 
before he was elected, he was the hardest person working person that she knew. And um, I think that, you know, it's borne out in all the work that Senator McGuire has helped us in Mendocino County, you know, on all the projects we're working on. And, you know, it shows even in the Senate where he's a majority leader now. So he's got extra influence in the state to get things done that we need done in Mendocino County. You know, I just thinking about the things that we've been working on together of, you know, for fire and safety issues. So, you know, fuel reduction projects, the equipment, the resources and staff, he's been able to provide, you know, Cal Fire with those things um, and help out with our FireWise councils. Um, certainly with the water, when we had the crisis last summer, you know, helping ship water from Ukiah to the coast. He was right there for us and helping out all the way. Um, and now, you know, we're working on, um, as a county, you know, standing up a water agency so that we can have greater collaboration between all the districts in our county um, and really do a study on the quantity and quality of water that we're dealing with, because those, those issues are critical as we enter another year of drought. And then uh, lastly, you know, economic development. And Senator McGuire has been there with us. He's been working with me on um, the cannabis and the tax reform that he's just proposed a bill for. We wanna thank him for that. Um, career and technical education, that's um, near to both of our hearts. And we, you know, he started a construction program at the college. Um, you know, I worked on this EMT and paramedic program, and certainly Senator McGuire was very um, helpful in that process too. And and then there's broadband and all the um, connectivity issues we have in Mendocino County. And um, he's been on meetings every month for the last year plus you know, getting better cell service and U.S. cellular in in Covalo, Round Valley area. So really, I want to thank him for all this work. And, you know, those are things that we're working on together, the fire safety, the water, economic development, and we're going to continue working on those things. So I see that there's a lot of questions about some of those issues. And anyway, thank you. I want to say thank you so much, Supervisor Hashtag. And we do go way back. And uh, Supervisor Hashtag has been dedicated to the youth of our county for many years as a dedicated teacher. Uh, and I'm so grateful that you're with us. And I am even more grateful that you're on the Board of Supervisors, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now would like to better turn our attention to Supervisor Jurdy. Supervisor Jurdy really is a veteran of the board. Uh, he's been that steady hand for all of these years. We're grateful that Supervisor Jurdy is with us. He's gonna be giving us a county update and we're gonna be hearing from Sheriff Kendall in just a bit. Supervisor Jurdy, good evening, welcome. Well, thank you, Senator McGuire. And I, I uh, agree wholeheartedly with Supervisor Hashtag's comments about you being the hardest working <laughs> member of the, of the state legislature. And, and I think it really shows the fact that they promoted you to majority leader. You know, I think you're maybe only, only the second majority leader from the North Coast in, in the history of California. Um, so just briefly, uh, I want to just add one extra thing beyond what Supervisor Hashtag talked about. He covered a lot of territory. Um, one of the priorities of this Board of Supervisors is to um, address one of the underlying issues of drought and, and uh, fires, and that is climate change. And so one of the things that we did, we invested the um, PG&E money um, that we received in the settlement almost entirely for fire and, pre and prevention for disasters, but we did dedicate $2 million, about 10%, um, to climate redu or carbon reduction projects. So for the first time, the County of Mendocino now has a dedicated fund. You know, it's, it's a start to reduce our, our climate, our greenhouse gas emission impact um, and, and get the county to a, a climate or carbon free um, footing for our buildings and our fleet. So it's a beginning. Um, we, we're applying for grants right now to uh, install electric car chargers at county facilities. And this is following what we've already done where we switched um, and offered Mendocino County residents Sonoma Clean Power, which is at this point 94% carbon free power, none of that coming from uh, nuclear power plants. And, um, and that's something that's helping all Mendocino County residents um, go basically carbon free with their electricity. 
So we, we really want to roll out new rebates and things. Um, we're also, Supervisor Hashak and I are working um, closely on this. Um, we're we're um, applying with Humboldt County, our partners to the north, um, to get public utilities funds, which will um, provide bigger rebates and more rebates in the hands of Mendocino County consumers and businesses so they can convert to uh, more fuel efficient and um, uh, electric powered heating systems for their water or for their buildings. And so anyway, so um, all that's in the works and i um, really happy to be here tonight with all the folks here. Thank you very much. Supervisor, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to hear more from Supervisor Jurdy, Supervisor Haschak here in just a few moments. We're going to be getting to your questions. Several dozen have been submitted. Uh, we are now about 127, I see, strong on the line, and we welcome each and every one of you. Uh, we want to remind you, if you'd like to be able to ask questions, we're taking them live tonight. Feel free to email us right now, taking your questions, your comments, we're relaying your criticisms. Senator.McGuire at Senate.ca.gov. I uh, would now like to be able to turn the event over to Sheriff Matt Kindle. Uh, I mean this when I say it. He's one of the hardest working sheriffs in the entire state of California. He works with all sides. I'm grateful to partner with him. Sheriff Kindle, the floor is yours, and we welcome you uh, to the town hall. We'll ask you to take yourself off mute. All righty. Can you hear me well? Once again, uh, just like my... Uh... My two supervisors here, I'd like to thank Senator McGuire. Um, every single time that we have a problem in Mendocino County, Mike meets us halfway. Um, and I truly appreciate it. He's gotten us some funding this year to combat some of the things that I've been working very hard on. This year, um, we're going to be working extremely hard to deal with some of the drug trafficking organizations, the cartel style grows, the folks who are... Uh, basically causing some of the biggest, baddest, and ugliest issues in Mendocino County. Um, with some funding that we were able to see, receive from Senator McGuire, and I know that all three of us from the county are appreciative of that, um, I believe that we're going to be able to start making some headway on these issues. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> most of the issues that we're seeing are in northern Mendocino County, where Supervisors Hashtag and Journey are th the supervisors up there. And so we're going to continue to work uh, collaboratively to come up with new and innovative ideas to, to be able to serve and to be able to get some of these bad actors out of here. But one of the things that we all have to understand is in order to get the bad actors out, we have got to support the legal market. And, you know, that support, you know, our, our supervisors are working on that on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, I believe you folks had a, an entire day long meeting, a special meeting on that, because we need to be able to support the legal market in order to undercut and get rid of the illegal market. You know, there's a reason why uh, there's a reason why people don't get robbed for Jack Daniels when you can simply purchase it at a store. You know, some of these things we we're moving forward at a, at a good pace right now. We've just got to stay in it, and uh, we'll never know how strong our metal is until we have to test it now and then. So, again, I appreciate this, and let's get the information out that we can. Thank you. Sheriff, it's good to see you. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be taking your questions, your comments here in just a bit. Again, senator.mcguire at senate.ca.gov. I'd like to be able to provide a very brief state update talking about all issues of uh, homelessness, uh, what we're doing to tackle that in partnership with the County of Mendocino, focusing on housing and climate change and wildfire, uh, and of course, the Great Red Betrayal. First and foremost, very quick state update. California remains the world's number five economy. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, California is also America's economic engine. Despite our challenges, we're still number one in job growth here in the United States of America. And we are now entering the 10th year of a surplus for the state of California. Never before in this state's history have we had such a healthy budget. Healthy budget of the highest income earners, corporations, and the top 1% paying the vast majority of state income and corporate tax. In addition, we have the highest reserves that we have had in a generation. Uh, we are now approaching $35 billion in rainy day fund reserve accounts, which will help us weather the next storm, which we know and eventually will be on the horizon. I'd like to talk about some specific areas where we've been working uh, with Supervisor Jurdy and Supervisor Haschak on in some accomplishments that we've been able to accomplish together. And I want to just say this Board of Supervisors, all five are amazing partners. So for example, uh, we are committed. 
We are committed to tackling the county's toughest challenges. As Supervisor Haschak has said, in Covalo, we are finally improving cell phone technology. Two, two uh, new cell sites, uh, cell towers have now been built along with a new uh, microwave network for all around Valley. Uh, we have gone from some of the highest drop call rates in the entire US cellular system to now below the national average. We're seeing about 0.5% of all calls dropped. That's below now the national average. Do we still have work to do? You're damn right we do. And we're making significant improvement. When we take a look at all issues uh, related to uh, homelessness, so we're focusing right now uh, on permanent supportive housing. That permanent supportive housing, for example, uh, in Ukiah, uh, 56 units. 56 units now uh, are, are operational in the city of Ukiah, and that is through a $10 million grant that came from the state of California. This would not have happened without the incredible work and candidly the backbone of Supervisor Haschak, Supervisor Jurdy, uh, and of course the remaining Board of Supervisors. And we're incredibly grateful for that. 5.4 million over the last 10 months have flowed into the County of Mendocino for emergency funding for homelessness, rapid rehousing, uh, housing vouchers, as well as emergency shelter. Now we're rebuilding the Redwood Valley Water District. That's approximately $7 million that we're moving forward in. And of course, in the last 24 months, about $6.5 million in wildfire uh, reduction work as far as fire breaks and uh, assisting um, communities with emergency routes, that is now moving and we're grateful uh, for the county's leadership on that. Let's quickly uh, talk all issues of public education. My big belief is the best investment we can make is in kids in public schools. We are finally, finally coming out of the abyss, uh, the abyss here in the state. The fifth large economy in the world should be number one in the nation in spending on our students, bottom line. So here's where we're at. Just seven years ago, we were dead last in the nation. Today, we're number 23. My hope is in the coming 24 to 36 months, we're gonna be in the top 10 out of any state in the United States of America. We are focusing on expanding counseling at all schools across the state, especially as we come out of this pandemic, we need to make sure that we are taking care of kids and their social emotional support, expanding the number of counselors uh, throughout the state of California in rural schools and urban schools in every corner of this state. We now have gone to universal school meals, universal school meals. So students no longer have to sign up to be able to get free and reduced lunch and free and reduced breakfast. It's automatic. What we know is that kids hunger. If a kid is hungry going to class, they're not gonna be successful in the classroom. So now it's universal across all schools that every child can access school meals. Here's the other really important piece. We have to drive down the cost of college. From here on out, the first two years of community college for any student at a 2.0 grade point average, any student can now get their first two years of community college paid for by the state of California. And it's about damn time. If we take a look at some of the top rates of bankruptcy in this nation, in this states, it's unpaid medical bills and it's college tuition and college debt. So we're driving down that debt. We're also expanding the number of childcare slots for women who are in the workplace. We're going from 400,000 state subsidized childcare spots to now 600,000. It's more important than ever uh, that we do that here in the state of California. I wanna talk about broadband for a moment. Let's just be really candid about this. Uh, there are too many Californians, and we know this living in, on the North Coast. We know this living in Mendocino County. Too many of us are on the wrong side of the digital divide. And it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, we are never gonna be able to be that economic powerhouse that we can be if we don't have access to high speed and reliable internet. So what are we gonna do about it? The state of California has now launched the largest public internet project in American history right here in California. $6 billion, it's in the bank, we've secured it. 
$6 billion to be able to build out the spine, the spine for the public broadband project. We're going to put fiber along Highway 101 and state roadways, county roadways, connecting rural communities, hospitals, and schools uh, in every corner of this state. We're taking a worst first approach. And what do I mean by that? Unserved communities first, underserved second. So that means the North Coast, we have more unserved communities than anywhere else per capita in the state of California, along with the North State to the east of us, will receive the vast majority of the funding and will get the funding first. And it's about damn time. So we're breaking this down. 3.25 billion will build the spine of the network, lay the fiber where communities then can tap in. Uh, the remainder of that funding will be given directly to communities, whether it is Willits or Leggett or Ukiah, uh, to be able to tap in and uh, launch their own public network. This is gonna be a game changer for the state and a game changer for our region. We need to fix the Cal Fire firefighter shortage. That's another big focus for us this year. Cal Fire's firefighter ranks peaked, staffing peaked in 1975 for Cal Fire, before I was born. It's unacceptable. So this year, we're going to hire 1,124 firefighters to be able to start fixing the Cal Fire firefighter shortage. We're going to hire 16 additional Cal Fire hand crews, 48 uh, firefighters each in each hand crew, and we're finally going to go to three firefighters per engine. The average Cal Fire engine has 2.5 firefighters on it. If you look at a municipal fire engine in a city, it's three firefighters per engine. If you look at uh, the federal fire department and the forest service, they have four firefighters per engine. Cal Fire, 2.5. It's unacceptable. And we're burning more acres than we ever had. So we are focusing on uh, hiring a record number of Cal Fire firefighters. In addition, you're going to see several billion in additional dollars funding wildfire fuel breaks, preparing emergency routes for veg management, right? Making uh, breaks along emergency routes like brook trails, for example. Uh, we are focusing on taking out dead and dying trees, on doing selective, selective and strategic forest thinning around communities. Uh, that is absolutely critical. And we're going to have the funding in the budget this year to be able to help local communities, whether it's in Mendocino County, Humboldt County, or Lake County. I'd like to quickly talk about an issue that Supervisor Jurdy brought up, and I'm grateful for that, and that is climate change. Uh, California is the canary in the coal mine. We are seeing the impacts of climate change today. And we are threatened by sea level rise. We're threatened by the severity of wildland fires. And we have to start moving towards true change. So what are we doing? The planet has hit the tipping point. So currently, California has some of the strongest clean energy and greenhouse gas reduction laws and targets in North America. But what we know based off of the predictions that the top, science clients, top climate scientists have, it's simply not enough. So we're going to be advancing the boldest climate policy package that we've seen in decades here in California. It's going to have four pillars. Number one, transitioning for fossil fuels. Petroleum, cars, trucks. Cars and trucks contribute 60% of all greenhouse gas emissions here in the state of California. So we're gonna have a specific strategy to transition from fossil fuels. Number two, uh, let's just be honest. If you live in Kern County, you earn your living wage working in the oil fields. You earn your retirement by working in the oil fields. We have to be able to, pro to provide a transition for those jobs. And I gotta be honest, uh, we haven't been focusing on that. Good paying jobs, are in the petroleum industry. We have to be able to provide alternatives. That's gonna be the second focus. We have to green our energy grid. We're gonna put the first offshore wind project in all of the West Coast off of Humboldt County in the coming few years. It's gonna be hundred megawatts. Here's the problem. We can't get that damn power into the rest of the grid because the transmission lines 
are too old. They're antiquated. So we're going to be focusing on upgrading our transmission lines so that we can become dependent on wind and more geothermal, wind offshore and onshore, additional solar. That's going to be a significant focus uh, as well as providing the funding that communities need to be able to prepare for sea level rise and extreme heat as well. Talking about climate change, I'd like to talk about this ridiculous asinine proposal coming out of Utah with the toxic coal train. So there is this shadowy, uh, shadowy group uh, coming out of Utah, Montana and Wyoming that wants to start a coal train here on the North Coast. That train would come on all the way out from Utah through Marin County, Sonoma County, Mendocino County, as well as Humboldt, uh, and bring, this is ridiculous, 800 train cars per day north and 800 train cars per day south, rumbling through our communities. It's not excusable. We have to stop this. So we are in a fight right now with the federal government to be able to stop the toxic coal train. We're also advancing legislation that would prohibit any state funding to be invested in this toxic coal train. And we need to get the Great Redwood Trail done. So this toxic coal train would run the same route that we are gonna be placing the Great Redwood Trail on. The Great Redwood Trail is 320 miles. It runs from the San Francisco Bay up to Humboldt Bay, and we're making real progress. We've already secured tens of millions of dollars to start building out, to start building out the Great Redwood Trail. We've already started building segments in Ukiah, soon to uh, be in the city of Willits. And I wanna say thank you to Willits for your commitment to this project. They have the money in hand. We're gonna get the money in hand for Ukiah to be able to build the remaining segment, the Southern segment in the great city of Ukiah. And we are finally moving forward with the master plan. Stay tuned in the coming months, you're gonna see us kick off a $10 million master planning project, how the trail is gonna be built, where it's gonna be built, and the community is gonna be involved every step of the way. What we know is that California has a multi-billion dollar uh, outdoor recreational economy. Trails plays a huge a piece of that. Uh, and you're gonna see this great river trail built come hell or high water. The last thing I'm gonna say, and then we're gonna go right to your questions. California has the largest pension system in the entire United States of America. We have found out that there is $2 billion, approximately $2 billion in the California public employee retirement system, along with the California state, uh, state teacher retirement system invested with the Russian government and Russian entities. We firmly believe that we need to divest, divest those dollars, just like every other nation is, divest those dollars here in California. We're advancing legislation that would ban any investment within any Russian entity, uh, and it would uh, divest immediately our two billion that we currently have invested within state-run entities within the nation of Russia. Look, California has the fifth largest economy in the world, like I stated earlier. We have to use our clout and our economic power for good. And that means strangling out Putin, the dictator, uh, and ensuring that we're able to stand strong for the people of Ukraine. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we got your questions. Uh, and I wanna remind you, we are getting questions uh, fast and furious right now. So we're gonna be taking your questions live here tonight. Simply email us, senator.mcguire at senate.ca.gov, senator.mcguire uh, at senate.ca.gov. Let's get right to it. Um, so let's, let's talk about a question that came in from Katie Smith. Uh, and I'm gonna also look to uh, Sheriff Kendall. Sheriff, uh, Katie writes in today, how can the state help with abandoned illegal growth sites, especially sites left behind after eradication from law enforcement? Obviously, these sites are riddled with trash and dilapidated infrastructure. So I'll just say this. Number one, uh, Assemblymember Wood is very focused on this specific issue. He's going to be advancing legislation this year that would provide enhanced funding for counties to be able to clean up old growth sites. Uh, so you're going to see that, number one. And then number two, uh, I firmly believe that we need to get matching dollars that would match 
uh, Assembly Member Wood's efforts to allow counties, after Sheriff Kendall, for example, moves forward with eradication effort, to allow counties to help clean that up, contracting with the, the California Conservation Corps or local conservation corps as well. But I'm going to go to Sheriff Kendall to get his thoughts on this critical issue as well. Sheriff. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Senator McGuire. One of the things that I think that, that uh, we've been looking at, particularly in Mendocino County, is we've got some... Uh, We've got some groups with uh, a, a lot of knowledge and a lot of information regarding these site cleanups and things like that. And they're forming right now. Um, one just formed a little company the other day uh, that are going to be helping us with some of the environmental blight. Um, one of the things that we're looking at doing is possibly contracting with them so that when we show up and we deal with something, it's marked. And there is a plan for the mitigation of it. And of course the county would have to be a portion of that because it's violations of uh, Mendocino County codes. But I think that uh, working together, we can come up with a good system to get these areas marked, get the mitigation efforts um, basically laid out and then get the mitigation taken care of. In the past on public lands, we've worked with um, different groups, uh, Friends of the Eel River up out of Covalo, things like that, where we've been able to take volunteers in, along with some federal funding to get um, some helicopters to lift the plastic and, and the garbage out of these sites. But I think that as we move forward, we're going to see a lot more of this. And so we're going to have to continue working on these issues and coming up with good plans and good personnel to be able to get the areas cleaned up. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sheriff. Sheriff Kendall talking about cleanup of cannabis sites. Uh, sure, uh, Supervisor Hashtag, did you want to chime in on this issue as well? Well, I'll just add that, you know, that's a huge issue for all of us in this county. But we're also working with um, Caltrans for Clean California, and we just passed a, a $200,000 front to front Caltrans for the um, free bulk day um, days, six of them throughout the county. And so um, the county's fronting Caltrans. Caltrans will reimburse the county. It's all through the Clean California program. And we've also applied for a um, community development block grant for over a million dollars for the Round Valley area. Because it's not just that kind of... Um, garbage left over from cannabis programs or sites, it's also the influence and impact it's having on communities. And we're seeing that garbage all around. So Thank you so much. Trying, yeah, we're just trying to clean it up. Let's keep on the issue of cannabis, right? Uh, so look forward, I'm gonna to go to Sheriff Kendall and then of course, uh, Supervisor Hatchak and Supervisor Jurdy. We got a lot of questions on cannabis here tonight, gentlemen. So Sandra writes in, I continue to hear conflicting interpretations about what constitutes, quote, a legal cannabis grow. A large property that is for sale insists that 10% of the property is okay for a grow. I'd like to see or hear uh, a definitive statement of what's legal and how our water trucks will be monitored. Uh, Supervisor Haschak, do you want to talk about the water trucks and uh, what the interpretation is of legal and not? Supervisor Haschak. Yeah, at this point, you know, 10,000 square feet is the limit in, in Mendocino County. So anything over that is not in compliance with our county ordinance. Um, as far as the water trucks, we're gonna be dealing with that on March 15th. I have an agenda item that's coming to the board to deal with water extraction and water hauling. And so we hope to get um, some ordinances in place that we can really crack down on those. And we're looking at really you know, it's very hard to, to deal with the water trucks when they're in route, but we're looking at, you know, where are they getting the water from? So if we can go to the source of the water, you know, we're looking at trying to uh, really get a handle on that and control it at that level. Thank you so much, Supervisor Hashtag. Uh, Supervisor Jurdy, any items that you'd like to add to that? Just that um, I know that Fish and Wildlife is also looking at, at uh, water theft, and so we appreciate any work that they can um, contribute towards um, ending water theft in Mendocino County. Thank you so much, uh, Supervisors. We're taking your questions, your comments tonight. Feel free to email us right now. We're getting your questions. Thank you so much. We're going to get to more here in just a moment. 
Senator McGuire at Senate.ca.gov. We're taking your questions, your criticisms, uh, all comments live here tonight. Senator McGuire at Senate.ca.gov. Let's keep with the issue of cannabis. A lot of cannabis questions. I promise you we're going to transition after this. Uh, Justine writes in, uh, could uh, McGuire and Kindle uh, please provide an update on how the 600,000 Mendocino County received from the state to target the quote, worst of the worst illegal marijuana grows that they announced last September has been spent. I'll take a uh, first stab at this and I'm gonna turn it over to the good sheriff. So a little bit of background. I don't think there's a silver bullet to be able to go after the illicit grows, right? So number one, we need to make it, I, I think we need a comprehensive strategy. Number one, we have to look at taxes. Uh, the cultivation tax in this state is ridiculous. It's suffocating to small family farmers. And that's why we're advancing legislation that would eliminate the uh, cultivation tax for all small family farmers across the board here in California. Number two, we need to make it easier for individuals to come out of an, the illicit market and into the light of the legal market. Meaning we have to cut down the permitting time in costs to go from illegal to legal. The last piece is I'm a firm believer that it's beyond time that we go after the worst of the worst cannabis grows. Those grows that are threatening the safety of our communities. Those grows that are illegally pulling water out of strained streams. Those grows that are killing endangered species. Those grows that have known criminals uh, operating those sites. And I need to give credit where credit is due. Sheriff Kendall approached us uh, late last summer and said, McGuire, what the hell are y'all doing uh, when it comes to funding for cannabis, illegal cannabis eradication? Literally within two weeks, we were able to secure $1.5 million. And again, I want to give credit where credit is due. This all came from Sheriff Kendall's office. We were able to secure the money that will now put 1.5 million, 600,000 for Mendocino County, 600,000 for Humboldt County, 300,000 for Trinity County for a multi-county eradication effort. Those dollars arrived into each of those counties' coffers about 30 days ago. Right now, the counties, our office, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Bureau of Cannabis Control are coordinating on this eradication initiative that could start as early as the coming weeks and will most likely go into later 2022. Um, it will be a collaborative effort between the three departments. The sheriff is going to talk about some additional partnership. Uh, it will also include law enforcement from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. It will include scientists from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife to help document the environmental degradation that's present, officers from the Bureau of Cannabis Control, and potentially the California National Guard. And that's the structure. It's going after the worst of the worst. But Sheriff Kendall, uh, I want to turn it over to you to talk about uh, the eradication initiative that's upcoming. And coming to a worst of the worst grow near all of us, please, Sheriff Kendall. Thank you, Senator. So several months back, um, myself and uh, uh, four other Northern California sheriffs began talking about forming a coalition to be able to combat some of these worst of the worst things. Um, we were talking about a collaborative approach amongst counties to be able to stop the damage because these things are actually running over county lines. And a lot of the work that we had done in the north, it was almost like we had squeezed this balloon and it popped out into Trinity County. And then Sheriff Saxon would squeeze the balloon and it would pop out into Humboldt County. And so we decided that if we were to come together and, and have a collaborative approach on this, especially now when across California, law enforcement officers, our numbers are really low. COVID knocked out police academies. Uh, a lot of different things happened. And then we're in a real struggle to hire. So by combining all of our forces, uh, we came up with a plan basically to curtail the illegal cultivation of cannabis by drug trafficking organizations, address and mitigate 
uh, environmental damage caused by the Ill illegal operations. And so that mitigation factor is, is another portion of this that, uh, you know, we can find it, but we're going to have to deal with it when we do. And so we've still got some, some balls in the air on that. We're working with uh, some different, uh, different little companies that are forming to help us do that. And then to uh, identify and investigate, prosecute, any incidents, any incidents of uh, human trafficking, either sex trafficking, labor trafficking, that type of thing that we know often goes on with the worst of the worst. <clears throat> um, and using the funding that Senator McGuire was able to uh, secure for, for us, basically, our collective counties don't have to pay for the overtime and the per diem that it's going to cost for these counties to come help me and for me to come help them. We've got that, we've got that funding now. Uh, whereas, you know, I would have to go in and, and beg and borrow and, and, and try to get it out of my supervisors over here who are pulling their hair out, trying to find funds for everything else at the same time. And so I think that we're going to have a really good year this year dealing with those worst of the worst. We're going to be able to draw a line in the sand and, I'm keeping my fingers crossed right now that we're going to be able to jump on a few things that we hadn't been able to before simply because of personnel. And, and Sheriff Kendall, I want to follow up on that, but let's just be candid, right? This is a drop in the bucket. Um, we're identifying the worst of the worst growing operations on the North Coast, but I, mean, I, I got to be honest, we're looking at dozens upon dozens of illegal sites and what you're going to see focus on this year based off of 1.5 million is what you just stated. And, um, but you could probably use millions of dollars over the coming years to go after uh, these cartel grows, correct? I believe so. But at the same time, we've got to get out there, start the work, take the pulse and have a measured response to the things that we're running into. And honestly, um, I think that uh, just this first step is going to be a, a step in the right direction. And hopefully by the end of the year, we're going to see, uh, we're going to see enough headway in this that the fight will be less next year. And then it'll be less the year after that. But we got to take that first step in order. And, and you know, it's going to take us several years to clean this up. But do we want that to start today? Or several years from now, my vote's for today, and uh, so that's that's the direction we're going right now. Hundred percent. Thank you so much, Sheriff Kendall, for your leadership on this. All right, I want to go to uh, Robert's question. Supervisor has checked. Robert asks, are there going to be stronger restrictions on water hauling and groundwater extraction this year to illegal cannabis grows? Supervisor has checked, and Supervisor Jury, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Robert, for that question. Like I said before, on March 15th, we are going to bring an agenda item to the board. Um, it's Supervisor McGordy and myself, because we're the ad hoc on drought and um, water issues. And so really, we're looking at um, limiting water extraction and, and also putting some limits and restrictions on water hauling. And so if you have if you want to see exactly what we're proposing, send me an email at hascheckj at mendocinocounty.org. I can send it to you. You can look at it and any public comment on March 15th. You know, you can see it on probably March 12th when it comes out. It's published as a, on the board agenda. And um, we appreciate any kind of comments because we're still looking at it as a work in progress. Absolutely. Uh, I want to go to our next question. I'm going to go to Supervisor Jurdy. Uh, Supervisor uh, Morgan writes in, uh, what are you doing to take steps to implement desalinization technology in our region? Supervisor Jurdy, uh, Fort Bragg, yourself and Fort Bragg and the state partnered on this pocket plant uh, that I think could be a real example of what can work. But Supervisor Jordy, I want to turn it over to you as Morgan is asking, how can we expand desal uh, here on the North Coast? Supervisor. Yeah, so I think many of us have heard of desal as, uh, originally um, in other parts of the world where they were taking water out of the ocean. And that's incredibly energy intensive because, it, you know, you're removing a lot of, of, of salt. And so what the city of Fort Bragg did in partnership with the state is, is uh, uh, secure funding for a, a very, I would call almost like a portable facility 
and it provides about 30% of the city's water and it's only turned on in, in uh, low water flows. So what they're doing is they're taking water that's in the Noya River um, where there's a little bit of brackishness in the water, so it's too salty to drink, but they can just remove that little bit of brackish, uh, brackishness and, and they deposit um, the salt into the sewer plant, uh, which treats, or it's, it's absorbed in the treatment and then disposed of. Um, so it's, it's not a solution for all water source, and it, but the good thing about it is sort of a turnkey thing, so they can just turn it on when they need it. Ultimately, I think what we need um, on the coast is we just need more water storage. And, you know, you look at other parts of California, they've got relatively lar large water reservoirs. We've got the rainfall. We just don't have a place to store it <laughs> because we've had so much of it historically that we didn't need to store it. But now we're kind of recognizing that, you know, times have changed and we just need to increase our storage capacity because that's actually the cheapest water you can get is, is just stored water and gravity fed. No, 100%. And obviously, look, I think this, it's, it's producing uh, at peak about additional 250,000 gallons per day off the top of my head, Supervisor Jordy, that was able to help uh, the city of Fort Bragg get through the peak period of this drought and peak use. Supervisor Jordy, what say you on that? Well, absolutely. And it, it, it enabled the city to then continue selling, resume selling water to people who, the water truck haulers who were legitimate ones that were taking it to businesses and residences on the coast um, because otherwise the city had to otherwise shut off its supply of water to those water haulers. Uh, that's Supervisor Jordy representing uh, Northern Mendocino County along with a large chunk of the Mendocino coast. We're really grateful. All right, uh, let's uh, turn it over to the issue. We're getting some questions in here today of combining two county departments the Department of the Treasurer Tax Collector, along with the Department of the Auditor Controller. Uh, and just folks wanting to be able to understand the rationale behind that. Um, and I'll turn it over, uh, Supervisor Jordy, do you wanna take this one, please? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's different opinions about this, but from my perspective, those are both important offices, but they're pretty small. They're about 10 or 12 and 13 people per office. And so what we're um, doing under state law, we're allowed to um, combine those into one office with one elected officer who's running the office. And so that's what uh, the board has, has done. Um, and uh, so there will be an election um, coming up soon um, where this June, um, the voters will elect who runs that office. And um, under that office, there'll be a deputy department head in charge of the treasury function. And there'll be a deputy department head under the auditor controller function. Um, so we think it should run very smoothly. And we are having meetings with those two existing departments about their staffing levels. They both are understaffed due to recruitment issues. And we're getting, getting them some assistance from HR. And also we're, we've had uh, uh, some additional support given to them um, by the IT department, because while all of this is going on, there is also um, an update of the county's uh, software for its um, property management system. So it involves multiple county offices. Anyway, that software system, we're working out a lot of glitches um, with the vendor and the IT department. So giving a lot of support basically to those two offices right now. And, and, and I do believe that it will be a successful transition when the two offices merge into one effective January of 2023. All right, thank you so much, Supervisor Jurdy, on that issue. All right, let's go to our next. Uh, Joseph writes in about the Jackson State demonstration for us. And, wanting to get my thoughts and am I going to uh, attend, it was this past Monday when I was in Sacramento, uh, a walk in uh, the forest. Uh, but uh, Joseph, I just wanna give you my opinion as you had asked. Look, uh, here's my bottom line on the Jackson State demonstration forest. And obviously I look forward to hearing from any and all of you. Number one, I believe that the model, the model for the Jackson State demonstration forest is antiquated. Number two, in these modern times, I'm not exactly sure what the force is demonstrating to the state of California. Uh, number three, I firmly believe that the Jackson State Demonstration Force must have a focus on climate and fire resiliency, which currently uh, it does not have a significant focus on those two critical issues that are impacting our community and our planet. Um, and I am a firm believer that this state needs to advance a revamp of the management plan early. So we already know that the Department of Natural Resources for the state of California will move up the review and revamp of the management plan 
five years early. It's actually going to kick off this year. And I'm also a firm believer that we need to have an interim plan because to complete that management plan starting this year, it's going to probably take 24 to 36 months to be able to complete. So I believe that we need to have everything on the table for this interim plan. Um, and uh, we need to have a serious conversation about what we want the future of the Jackson State Demonstration Force truly to be. Uh, and candidly, it's beyond time. I'm grateful to so many in this community who have stepped up. Uh, Chairman Hunter, by the way, being the leader on this issue. Um, and I look forward to robust dialogue as we move forward. Uh, I'm a, I'll just be honest, I'm a firm believer that we shouldn't be cutting these large trees uh, in the Jackson State Demonstration Force any longer. And uh, I will tell you that the Natural Resource Agency is working hard on this issue. I wanna say how grateful I am to Secretary Crowfoot who is the Secretary of Natural Resources for the state of California. He has involved himself uh, through thick and thin on this issue. He's uh, meeting with us collaboratively, working with CAL FIRE on this issue. And I don't mean to be coy, but I believe I can say with authority, there is more to come in the coming weeks. Uh, but I believe that everything should be on the table, especially uh, with this interim plan that would be the bridge to um, what a larger revamp of the management plan will look like. Uh, that's my personal opinion. More to come, I promise you on that. But I wanted to turn it over to the supervisors uh, if they have anything to say on the Jackson State demonstration force. Well, I would just add, you know, I want to thank Senator McGuire for his leadership on, on this and many other issues. And that that's uh, along the lines of what the Board of Supervisors um, requested, at least specifically, we were requesting um, that the state take a look at the management plan in as it relates to climate change and um, and carbon sequestration and also fire resiliency. So um, I, I, we were it was a unanimous vote to ask them to relook at the plan uh, with those two issues in particular in mind and and a consultative process with the tribes. And it sounds like that's what's underway. Um, I appreciate that update, Senator McGuire. Absolutely. Supervisor check. And I'll just add that part of our resolution was that we were going to be more involved. The County Board of Supervisors was going to be involved in the Jackson Advisory Group. And so that's that's a group that looks, you know, at the timber harvest plans, at the big picture plan for the Jackson State Demonstration Forest. So, so we... Uh, Hopefully that will happen soon because I guess they're in a transition in Jackson State and, um, and the board will be involved. 100%, thank you so much, Supervisor Haschak, Supervisor Jurdy on that issue. Uh, I will tell you the issue of the night is cannabis. So I'd like to be able to go back to the issue of cannabis if it works for folks um, and uh, go to our uh, next question. This is coming in from Heather. Supervisors, you let me know who wants to take this first. Um, why is the Mendocino County Cannabis Program not processing Appendix G paperwork uh, to satisfy CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act? So Supervisor Haschek, why don't you give us a little bit of background on this? Uh, and if uh, you don't mind hitting Heather's question. Yeah, Heather, um, you know, Appendix G is like the bridge that we have from our program to the state CEQA. And so right now it's been put on hold by the cannabis program while they were dealing with the portal because the portal is where people who are applicants are still trying to get their information in. And so, so the cannabis program, because they don't have the staffing that they need, they had to put a halt on something and it was processing these appendix Gs. And so hopefully that will start up soon and we will get those moving because we understand that people need to get their annual state licenses. And so I think with, Super, with Senator McGuire saying before, you know, part of our cannabis program needs to be holistic. You know, not just going after the worst of the worst, but also making sure that people can get their annual licenses 
and get to state licensure. Supervisor Hatchak on all issues of local cannabis regulation. Supervisor Jordy, any items that you want to add to this? Uh, just that, you know, it, this is a relatively new um, industry to be regulated. And, you know, regulation in local government, state government, it's not always simple. And so, it, you know, um, you know, we, we've continually looked at adjusting our ordinance and adjusting our program to try to um, meet the, the multiple competing interests. Um, and uh, so I think Supervisor Hashak is um, working very hard on, the, on this issue with, with our cannabis program. And I think our cannabis program, from what I can see, is actually <laughs> in a better position today in terms of staffing and, and its productivity than it's ever been. So I know people have probably heard that for some time, but I, I urge some patience. You know, I, I think you know we're we're getting it to be a higher performing organization, and it actually today officially became its own department. That's huge news and major progress. Thank you so much, Supervisor Jurdy. I want to go to our next question, and this is in regards to the Great River Trail. Shannon writes in: uh, How do you plan to help local resources, uh, the state? Uh, fire, sheriff, ambulance to help respond if needed on the trail uh, when they can't handle what they already have to deal with? Um, and why do governments spend money on things like trails when our rural areas need water storage, industry resources, please do not build the trail. Um, so here's what I'll say, Shannon. Um, I, I think what's really important is this trail is going to be one of our largest economic drivers. Um, the outdoor recreational economy in the state is worth over $50 billion. Prior to the pandemic, it was worth over $80 billion. One of the largest economic drivers for Mendocino County and Humboldt County is tourism. And you take a look at what large destination trails bring in for the communities that are along it, it's significant. It's a significant boom for restaurants and inns. It's a significant boom for um, retail. People come from far and wide to be able to walk the coastal trail in California, the Appalachian Trail back east. And this will be the longest rail trail in the United States of America. So let's talk about public safety for a second. And I agree with you, Shannon, that we should all be concerned in regards to how we're able to work in collaboration with rural sheriff's offices and volunteer fire departments that would need to be able to respond to the trail. So what I've always said about the Great Redwood Trail is number one, we can't do it fast, we have to do it right. That's why we've secured $10 million to be able to move forward with a trail master plan. So here's how this is gonna work. Number one, we need to uh, move the current agency into the 21st century. Uh, and coming up next month, the North Coast Railroad Authority, which is all been focused on trains, is transitioning to the Great Redwood Trail Agency. So this new board will have a trail focus, number two. We're bringing in a new management firm. It's through the Coastal Conservancy, the State Coastal Conservancy. One of their main missions is to be able to build trails. They're building the Coastal Trail and they've been building the Coastal Trail for decades. I say all that is we need an experienced manager overseeing the board in all operations. And candidly, we need an experienced manager to be able to oversee the master plan. So here's the master plan. The master plan is going to look at all construction costs. The master plan will study the route. The master plan will study what type of surface will the trail be. About 90% of the Great River Trail is going to be like a backcountry trail, less than 10 feet wide, all on dirt. The great piece about the Great Redwood Trail, it's going to be relatively inexpensive to build outside of cities, because you're literally just building it on top of the rail bed. As part of the master plan, there is gonna be a public safety study determining what we believe call outs for ambulance rides, uh, law enforcement disturbance, fire will be. We also are gonna do a wildfire safety study uh, for the Great Redwood Trail. So that's gonna study uh, how to be able to keep uh, the trail wildfire safe. Here's the good news. I've heard a lot of folks say that wildfire will be created potentially from the Great Redwood Trail. If you take a look at the largest wildfires in this state, it's not coming from trails. It's coming from PG&E. It's coming from vehicles. 
It's not trail users. Uh, and I encourage you to be able to look that up uh, and to be able to fact check me. And that's the honest to God truth. So uh, I'm a firm believer that this is going to be a worldwide destination because the Great River Trail, nowhere else on earth, are you going to be able to walk from the bustling waters of San Francisco Bay up through Mendocino and Sonoma wine country to be able to walk through uh, national wildlife? Uh, corridors in land, to be able to walk through state parks along the trail, and eventually end up on the sparkling waters of Humboldt Bay, and through all of the amazing communities that make up the North Coast. This is going to be a game changer for us, uh, and I couldn't be more excited, but my big belief is we have to do this right, not fast, which is why we're going to be having a 24 to 36 month planning process for the Great Redwood Trail. All right. Let's go to uh, our next um, our next question, and that is on all issues of uh, a think tank for Mendocino County. Supervisor Jurdy, uh, Morris Morris Set writes in: Is there a think tank looking at helping with business growth in the rural areas of northern Mendocino County? Uh, and I'll then turn it over to Supervisor Haschak. Um, in a way, yes. So we have a nonprofit in Mendocino County called uh, West Business Center, and the county is contracting with them uh, to provide for economic development um, strategies, helping out businesses. And um, so uh, they are our designated entity. But I would also encourage if anyone has any economic development ideas to email Supervisor Hashak or myself or West Company directly and um, propose their ideas, or if they're seeking help for their existing business. Um, again, West Company um, it, it, it develops or has uh, um, advisors on all sorts of things. Everyone from people who give advice on their business taxes to how to get a planning permit, um, the whole gamut. And it's not income based. It's it's here to help any business, any individual who wants to start a business in Mendocino County. As Supervisor Jurdy, uh, please let's go to Supervisor Haschak. And another thing that we've tasked the West Business Company with is, is to create a database of grants. And so what we're looking for is easy access to grant for economic development, you know, community development, those kind of issues. So if you have any questions about that, you can contact the West Business Center or contact me. Really appreciate that, Supervisor. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to our next question. Our next question is coming from Lucy. Lucy asks, when is the Great Redwood Trail going to be built in Willits? So, Lucy, we got some good news uh, for you. Uh, the state has been able to secure uh, 400000 uh, for the city of Willits. So that 400000 is coming from the California Transportation Commission. Uh, that is going to be from the depot in town to the north end of town. Uh, Willits will need to be able to apply for the remainder to go from the depot south. Now, here's the really good news about the Great Redwood Trail. So I mentioned the $10 million for the master plan. In addition, we've secured $350 million for trail build out all across the state. And guess where that $350 million is going to be housed? the Coastal Conservancy, the Coastal Conservancy who will now manage the Great Redwood Trail. So not only do we have an experienced, experienced trail builder who will be managing the agency and managing the master plan, they finally have the dollars that will help build out the Great Redwood Trail, whether it's in Willits or connecting Hoplin to Ukiah uh, or moving towards Humboldt County, Eureka and Samoa. So we have the funding, uh, we're moving forward on the master plan. Uh, and I got to tell you, uh, this would not have happened without the Mendocino County Board of Supervisors. I just want to be blunt about that. Uh, Supervisor Haschak, Supervisor Jurdy, so Supervisor Mulhern, they have been absolute champions for this project because it's going to be more than a nature walk. It's going to be an economic driver for the North Coast, literally for generations to come. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, Lake Mendocino. Uh, Supervisor Haschak, Roy writes in, what can be done in the short term to increase the viability of Lake Mendocino? And then also Roy has a second question, Supervisor, what more can be done to provide affordable housing uh, for 
homeless residents in Ukiah and Willits? And we'll go to Supervisor Jurdy. Well, the county is right now standing up a water agency. And because we understand that Lake Mendocino can't be counted on right now, there's so many problems, there's federal issues that um, really are going to be years in, in dealing with. And so what we're trying to do as a county is stand up this water agency, make sure that there's more collaboration between the different water agencies um, in the Ukiah Valley and um, so that we have more security because we need to we need to be secure in our water because with, without water, we don't have life. And so that's one of the things we're really trying to work on is, like I said before, figure out what the quantity is, what the quality is, and make sure that there's um, interties between different water agencies. Thank you so much, Supervisor Peace. Uh, Supervisor Jurdy. Yeah, if I could on the housing issue, um, you know, and I could broaden it out if I could on all housing. I mean, really, the housing issue is just really challenging everywhere in California and, and clearly here in Mendocino County as well. It's, um, you know, it, the cost to build housing is it's just high when you're building houses one house at a time. It's not like we're building fancy, most houses in Mendocino County, you know, we're not building fancy houses, but if you build it one house at a time versus 12 or 30 at a time, like, like they do in Sacramento and other places, you know, the cost per square foot is just higher. And so when you have people who are, you know, like all of us working for a living, you know, you, you go to a bank and you, you borrow money and, and you can't finance, you know, a house that's built as, as if it's a custom house, even if it's not fancy. And so, um, so we, we've got a lot of challenges there. One of the exciting things um, that, you know, we're looking at all sorts of ideas, but one of the exciting things, City of Fort Bragg is looking at launching a nonprofit that would be called a, a housing land trust. And what I like about the, their concept is that it would um, be focused on developing workforce housing and they would um, try to secure grants and then acquire a piece of property, you know, a few acres to be able to build more than just a, a couple houses and then sell those houses or rent to those houses to people who are in the workforce, but can't otherwise afford to buy a house on the open market. And then it would be resold if that person chooses to sell it 20, 30 years down the road to someone else who's in that same general income band, affordable to someone in that same income band. So that person would develop equity over time, move into uh, up and into the middle class, but buying that house doesn't give them an instant lottery ticket. It, it gives them an opportunity to move in with financial security into the middle class. Supervisor Jurdy talking about uh, innovative solutions to one of our toughest problems, affordable housing. Thank you so much, Supervisor. All right, I wanna go to the sheriff. Sheriff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do rapid fire with you, lightning round with the sheriff uh, from Ron, Suzanne, and Josh. All cannabis related, Sheriff, here we go. Ron says, uh, what is the county gonna do about the cartels that have taken over? So Sheriff, give us your perspective uh, and I know you've covered this, but, you know, folks are tuning in and out tonight, right? So talk about what initial step will be, but talk about your concern about the cartels in Mendocino County. Well, the drug trafficking organizations that have moved into Mendocino County, they moved here with a two-year plan, and that is to make as much money as they possibly can. They are very ruthless. They don't care how they do it. And a portion of their plan is not to treat people well, not to treat the environment well, and not to clean up the garbage when they go. That is not a portion of their plan because that costs money. And therefore, this coalition that I've been working on with the other sheriffs, um, that should allow us to get more personnel. We will concentrate on the big, bad, and the ugly. We will uh, lean in on that funding that you've provided us that I can actually uh, use to pay the overtime and pay the per diem for the assistance from these other sheriffs. Now, they are going to require assistance from me as well. However, the approach that we had done in the past where... I would hit areas very hard um, and, and do a lot of work up there. Then they would just jump over the county line and escape me. Um, we, we have all got to work together on this problem. And then, the, of course, you know, our partnerships with the Bureau of Cannabis Control. My understanding is Bureau of Cannabis Control is currently growing at this point. Rome wasn't built in a day. And um, that, along with CDFW, um, we often receive assistance from peace officers with CAL FIRE. Um, we have to reach out and kind of grab onto everyone that we possibly can to be able to get things done. When we run a cannabis unit in uh, Mendocino County with two people, because that is all that we have, 
Um, you know, it's pretty hard to get some of these big, bad, and ugly unless we jump in and we work together. Sheriff Kendall, talking about cannabis, I want to go to uh, Suzanne's uh, question. A little more pointed, somewhat related, Sheriff. Suzanne says, uh, and I know you've, you've talked about this, but again, folks are coming in and out tonight. What are your plans for curtailing environmentally and socially damaged illegal cannabis growth sites this coming season? What type of funding is available? You just talked about the funding, but Sheriff, give us the lens in which you're using to target the worst of the worst. Worst of the worst, I, I have four prongs basically that hold pretty much equal levels. Drug trafficking organizations where we know that we have a drug trafficking organization and these guys are bad, bad fellas who are doing bad things. Second is going to be any trespass grows. Trespass grows are not okay. If I'm paying the taxes on my land, you don't get to trespass and grow on it. Environmental damage. Uh, if we have environmental damage there, we have to deal with that. And then the last one are these locations where we have been dealing with homicides, we've been dealing with shootings, any violence, human trafficking, um, labor or sex trafficking, those have got to be dealt with as well. And so those are our four prongs. Of course, the ones with violence have to come first because that requires an immediate response. Um, labor trafficking, sex trafficking, violence, we have got to deal with those immediately. And then, you know, all of these take priority for us. When they meet any of those four prongs, those are the ones that we have to deal with immediately. Thank you so much, Sheriff. Uh, hitting those important issues, really grateful, Sheriff, on that. I'd like to be able to continue with the issue of cannabis in water. Sheriff, um, how do you intend, uh, Pat writes in, how does the Sheriff intend to be able to enforce bans on water deliveries to illegal cannabis grows? Honestly, I'm going to have to uh, work with Supervisor Haschak on that because, um, you know, currently the bans are Mendocino County Code um, and we've got code enforcement and whatnot for that. Um, I am pretty darn short right now. My deputies are called to call and then writing reports. Um, if we happen to be on a... Um, an obvious, uh, you know, illegal water truck, of course, we're going to deal with it. I cannot afford to pull my people off of um, patrols when we're dealing with robberies and homicides and things like that to uh, to deal with the code enforcement work. But, um, you know, code enforcement and uh, our building and planning department, they had a big shot in the arm with personnel this year. And we're hopeful that that's going to be uh, we're hopeful that that's going to be a, a help and a deterrent. All right, let's talk about uh, enforcement for, please, Supervisor Jordy, enforcement on, on uh, water deliveries to illegal cannabis growth. Supervisor Jordy, Supervisor Hashtag then. Yeah, um, just generally, I mean, um, the, he, Sheriff Broad, code enforcement. And when I first became supervisor back in uh, 2013, there were three code enforcement officers for the entire county. We're now up to, I think, nine. Plus, we have one attorney in the county council's office dedicated to backing up the code enforcement division uh, with this legal assistance. So, you know, it's, it's never enough, but it's definitely bigger than ever. And, and they're recruiting, they're filling positions. So I know that they're going to be, um, I know that they are in constant contact with the sheriff's office. They work with the sheriff and um, they, pr they provide the kind of support that they can. And um, so when they, when the sheriff's office sees something that code enforcement can deal with, they're going to be on it. Sure. Supervisor has check. Yeah, and we're looking at different approaches to it because certainly we can't put it all on the sheriff or code enforcement. We're looking at, you know, this water agency controlling the water sources. And, um, you know, the, we're looking at what they've done in Lake County. You know, they did an emergency ordinance to bust water haulers that were caught at um, grow, illegal grow sites. But, you know, they're saying that that's not very effective. And so we're trying to craft an approach that will be the most effective as possible. And it's um, coming to the board on March 15th. So stay tuned. All right. More information coming to the board on March 15th on all issues. Thank you so much of cannabis. Uh, we're running into our time. We have about five more minutes left. We're going to go to a, a rocket round lightning fast questions. Let's go to 
Prana. Prana says pg e has cut down thousands of healthy trees in the name of, quote, fire reduction. Property owners have not been informed prior to trees being cut on the property. Who at the government level is providing oversight uh, regarding pg e destruction? Why isn't pg e being required to bury lines in high fire risk areas? Brenna, thank you so much. Uh, and I apologize if I mispronounced your name, but look, I'll be really candid with you. I literally just sat down uh, with the brand new CEO of PGE yesterday to talk about this issue. So um, PGE just announced an undergrounding plan for their most high fire risk uh, transmission lines. I'll be blunt, it doesn't go far enough. Uh, and you're going to see us advancing legislation this year once again to force PGE to not only expedite the miles of line that they need to underground, uh, but to uh, provide rate payers a uh, metrics. So if they don't hit their goals for the year, um, it comes out of the shareholders' pockets. And I firmly believe we also need this legislation to protect rate payers uh, because this is going to be an expensive project. So number one, we're going to be advancing legislation that will protect ratepayers and, and expedite the undergrounding of high fire risk lines. There's about 10,000 miles of pg e line. A lot of it goes through Mendocino Lake and Sonoma counties, along with the North State. Uh, and we know when pg e undergrounds these lines, and let's just be blunt, they should have done this friggin' job years ago. Um, we're here now, we have to hold them accountable, uh, and we have to look at a more sustainable solution, and that's getting those lines underground. And, and I firmly believe while we're undergrounding these lines, we also have to put telecom underneath the ground as well. So that's something that we're going to be working on here in the coming months. And Prana, I'm really grateful uh, for your response. Jeff writes in and says, Mike, you talked about a thousand more Cal Fire firefighters. How about at least two responders in every fire protection district station 24 hours a day to put out these wild and fires uh, when they are still small? Look, Jeff, I agree with you. There are some grants available, uh, but I, I got to be honest, Cal Fire is understaffed um, and they've been understaffed for over 40 years. Um, Cal Fire has a philosophy, a mission to get their fires out 10 acres or less. They're able to do that about 90% of the time. They have to do better. They're the gold standard of a firefighting force here in the United States of America. And 54,000 mental health calls have come in from uh, Cal Fire fighters over the last three years. We have to focus we have to focus on getting more uh, Cal Fire firefighters uh, uh, hired. And yes, I agree with you about volunteer departments, but uh, we have to make sure that we're focusing on Cal Fire first, since they are the legal first responder on so many of these fires. And I'm just going to be blunt. Um, I don't, the feds are going to invest some significant funds, but the National Forest Service Firefighting Force is so underfunded. If we don't invest in CAL FIRE now, I think we're going to be in uh, more dire straits because the feds are even further behind on where the state is at in regards to hiring firefighters. But uh, you're going to see this moving forward uh, here as we move forward. All right. Um, I'm going to just last question for each of our panelists. Uh, I want to go to, let's see here. Um, so sorry, there we go. Uh, Stephanie writes in, uh, status of the Great Redwood Trail and how can we help? Uh, I was just in re Utah and they really report um, that uh, the coal shipping possibilities are real on our coast. Supervisor Haschak, I uh, want to get your take on the Great Redwood Trail. You've been instrumental along with Supervisor Mohern, Mohern on this issue. Your take on, I, I've talked a lot about the Great Redwood Trail. Last question for you. Give us your take on moving the Great Redwood Trail forward. Well, yeah, I'm going to be on the Great Redwood Trail Agency. And, you know, we've had discussions with people all along the um, Eel River Canyon to see what their concerns are. We've had discussions with people in the Hoplin area. So we're moving forward. We're, we understand that there are going to be lots of issues, lots of concerns out there. But at the same time, like Senator McGuire says, there's lots of possibilities. 
and the board did do a um, declaration, a resolution against this coal train. So, you know, we're we're supportive of the senator's efforts to stop that in its tracks. Hundred percent. I want to go to our next question, and this one is going to now be for the sheriff. Sheriff, uh, we've had a few questions tonight about violence against Native women, uh, and you are uh, Kovalo is your family's home. Uh, you're over there every weekend, uh, and especially in Mendocino and Humboldt counties, we've seen um, violence against Native women increase over the last ten years. We've seen unsolved cases uh, throughout the state and here on the North Coast. If you don't mind, last question for you. Uh, I know this is a priority for you, focusing on violence against Native women and uh, what the Sheriff's Office is doing on this uh, really critical issue. Well, I've been working with the, uh, the MMIW, the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's Group, um, as well as, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, we've, we've got a case that keeps me awake at night because she's a child of a couple of folks I grew up with and who are good friends of mine. One of the things that we have to do is we have got to continue pushing forward to build better relationships so that when these crimes happen, we have people who are willing to pick up the phone and call us. We have people who are willing to give us the information immediately when they occur. We've got to change the culture in some ways to where I get a lot of phone calls in the middle of the night from people who know me, but they need to have the same trust in these deputies that are serving them on patrol every day. And, you know, sometimes it's actually a deterrent to call me because then I have to wake up and write down their information and then call my dispatch and explain what's going on when it probably would have been better to call 911. Let's work really, really hard on working hand in hand to change some of the cultures so that people are not afraid to be a quote unquote cop collar or a snitch. That is not what you're being. If you pick up the phone when you see something violent going on, you're being a good neighbor, you're being a good human being. Absolutely, Sheriff Kendall, I know this is very personal for you as well, so thank you uh, for that. Um, well, last question coming in to Supervisor Jurdy, and this is coming in from Matt. Uh, Matt asked Supervisor Jurdy, what's being done about providing broadband internet and uh, cell phone coverage to residents and rural communities in Northern Mendocino. Um, Supervisor, obviously we're working together on that six billion that's moving. There will be Mendocino County projects, but if you don't mind, Supervisor Jurdy, give us an update uh, on broadband activity here in Mendocino County, especially connecting small rural communities. And we're gonna go to closing comments from each of our panelists. Well, as the Senator talked about earlier tonight, um, the state's making an unprecedented investment in uh, broadband statewide, and uh, it, they've tasked Caltrans um, to use their their right of way and, and their know-how to deliver projects to deliver that uh, middle mile throughout the um, Caltrans right of way, public right of ways. And um, so our county um, is working with the state to try to secure, I believe we're we're going to be getting some of those funds directly to the county. And um, I, I'm not personally on the committee working on that, but I know that they've developed over several years a plan um, that uh, is equitable, reaching the parts of the county that are least served. And I, I believe uh, the northern part of the county is actually um, the, the principal target of those funds. Supervisor Heshak? Yeah, I think that that, <clears throat> that middle mile will go through you know, the 101 corridor up through northern Mendocino County and also go out to Covalo. So we're really working on those areas and that's a focus. Thank you so much, Supervisor Jurdy, Supervisor Hashtag. We are so grateful that each and every one of you have tuned in tonight where we have about 94 people that are still hanging with us. Thank you so much. We're about an hour and a half in. We went longer uh, than we anticipated just due to the volume of questions that have come in. I want to turn it over to our panelists. Again, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your commitment. I want to provide uh, 30 second closing comments. We're going to start with Sheriff Kendall uh, closing comments, sir. And thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Well, I wanted to thank you for having this meeting. <clears throat> you know, we've got a lot of things that are going in the right direction in Mendocino County. And sometimes we only focus on what's going off the rails. We need to fix this. We need to fix that. My mother had incredible faith when I was growing up, and she reminded me when I was young, sometimes when you're talking to the Almighty, it doesn't have to be what you want. Sometimes it's thankful for what you have. And um, I really appreciate the constant support 
that uh, the people of Mendocino County are giving all of us, including the supervisors. And thank you. Sheriff, it's good to see you. Thank you for your work, sir. Really appreciate you being with us. Let's go to Supervisor Journey for closing comments. I would say, you know, our partnership with the state has never been stronger. And I really do appreciate all the work that you do, Supervisor, or Senator McGuire. I mean, every every time we need something, we, we, we get on the phone and we get a hold of Senator McGuire. Um, you know, when I first got on the board in 2013, the, the county was still in a rebuilding phase. It was just building back reserves from the 08, 09 recession. And, and we really haven't had during a good chunk of my time on the board, really what I would call discretionary money. And for the first time, we're really in a position where we've, we've been able to bring um, county wa employee wages back to market. Um, we're therefore being able to, I think we're in a position now where we can start filling positions again. And, um, and, and we're, we have those reserves and we're taking on projects. For example, today, um, we, we, or yesterday, we set up a, um, a plan to have a team of four grant writers dedicated um, to go after what we know are available state and federal dollars. So I think what you're going to see is more and more state and federal dollars coming into Mendocino County for these community projects all throughout Mendocino County. You know, we don't live in the county of Ukiah. We live in the county of Mendocino. And, um, you know, we do intend to, to um, build up community projects all throughout the county um, with, with the resources that we have available to us. Supervisor Jordy, you make a really great point. I mean, you have to admit, uh, from where you started to where you're at now, due to the, the fiscal prudence of the board, um, much better off than ever before. Supervisor Jordy, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there are some really difficult lean years, correct? Yeah. No. Thank you so much, Supervisor Jordy. Uh, closing comments from Supervisor Haschak. Well, thank you, Senator McGuire. I really appreciate your you're having this town hall for the people of Northern Mendocino County. And I think the people are really appreciative of it. And thank you. And thank you to Sheriff Kendall and to Supervisor Jerdy, you know, great partners in this government work that we're doing. You know, obviously we've got a lot of work ahead of us in dealing with, you know, fire, with safety, with economic development, and, you know, the water, the drought issues that we have. There's a lot of issues before us, but, um, you know, there. I don't think there's anyone who are better people to work with and who are harder workers than what you're seeing here. So thank you very much. Supervisor Hashtag, thank you. Very grateful. Uh, and I just want to end it right here and say this. Look, we're coming uh, through two years that are probably going to be some of the most difficult in our lifetime. There's been a lot of loss. People are upset, rightfully so. There's a lot of frustration. Uh, and I want to make you a promise. Each one of us every day when our feet hit the ground, we are thinking about how we can deliver for Mendocino County. That's the bottom line fact of it all. Uh, and I'm grateful that you would even allow us to be able to come into your living rooms here tonight. Uh, here's where our focus is gonna be. Our focus is gonna continue to deliver on making our communities more wildfire safe, bottom line. We're gonna be focusing on this drought uh, and how we can uh, continue to invest in additional storage systems, how we can invest in desalinization systems, uh, in additional wells for inland communities. We're going to be focusing on homelessness. Uh, it has to be at near the top of our priority list. Of course, you're going to see additional work on the worst of the worst, cannabis grows being eradicated. And I, again, I can't stress this enough. Truly, Sheriff Kendall was the one that came to us to be able to get this job done. There's a lot of work to do. But we're going to be relentless. We're going to be relentless in this pursuit to be able to keep our communities safe. Uh, and that is going to be a significant focus as we move forward here in 2022. If you ever need to get a hold of us, best way, 916-651-4002. Call us or email us anytime. Senator.mcguire at senate.ca.gov. Senator.mcguire at senate.ca.gov. And I want to say thank you to Trevor. I want to say thank you to Carrie, Adriana. I want to say thank you so much to Brooke and to John, who are all behind the scenes that help make tonight possible. And I want to end it as we started it. There is no other place that I would rather live. We're full of grit. We're determined. And we get the job done. We never give up. We never give in, no matter how tough the times have been. And let's just be candid. Times have been tough. 
And we always are there for our neighbors in need. I know that's going to continue for the years and decades to come. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm sorry if we didn't get your question. We were inundated with questions. We went longer. Uh, but thank you so much for the ability to be able to work with you each and every day. Stay strong, Mendocino County. We look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks for tuning in tonight.